Namaste. Namaste. Thank you so much. I really appreciate um, you allowing me to interview you. Uh, my name is Osi. I'm your host. It's Om Time. Welcome to Om Time. And I'm here with one of the greatest teachers in our time. His name is Kofi Busia. Kofi Busia has been teaching for more than 40 years. He studied closely to BKS Iyengar. And uh, we also edit a wonderful book. Um, here's the book, the Iyengar, the Yoga Master. And um, I read it. It's a wonderful, wonderful book and very inspiring. How did you know that that's your path to be a yoga teacher? I mean, you could have taught in Oxford. You could have, you know, be in one spot or just spend your time writing books. You're an incredible writer and, you know, you're so knowledgeable. You could have done something else. You had any moments throughout your teaching where you kind of question yourself. Is that really my path? <laughs> well, in, in my case, it was that uh, partly because of my family background, and mm. I mean, I, I am an African, and eventually my desire was to go back home to, to Africa to make my life there. But because my family was involved in, in politics, um, there was a coup, and I couldn't go home. Mm. So I then had to find something else to do. And... That meant settling down to a career that I could possibly abandon at any time so I could return home and then trying to figure out what that was because I wanted to do something that was useful. Mm. And I looked at teaching, for example, just an ordinary school teacher. But people in Western civilization don't appreciate education the way that I was used to from where I came from. Because, mm -hmm. I mean... You know, my father was raised by Methodist missionaries and he was mm -hmm. genuinely the first person in the community he came from to be taught to read and write. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when you have relatives who don't and can't read and write, you, you value education mm -hmm. in a way you just can't mm -hmm. explain mm -hmm. to people who take it for granted. Beautiful. So it wasn't, you know, the, 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 I mean, I wanted to teach amongst people who did appreciate what you were doing. And that... Yes. that that aspect of it was missing. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I, I wasn't that drawn. I did do a, they called it a postgraduate certificate in education. I did finish that. And um, I can't even remember if I did my probationary year. Because mm -hmm. uh, at that time, in order to be a school teacher, there were two tracks going into it. Mm -hmm. You could go to a teacher training college, or you could get your university education, and then do a one year certificate and then a probationary year. Mm. And if you did that, then you would be a qualified teacher. So it was kind of a fast-track thing. Mm. But becoming yeah. a teacher, you know, didn't really inspire me that much. Mm -hmm. And I thought about being a doctor and various other things. And I really kind of drifted into yoga teaching because I looked around for something I could do while I was busy trying to make up my mm -hmm. mind what I really mm -hmm. wanted to do. Yeah. And I'm still searching. Yeah, <laughs> you're still searching. I like that. I would love to ask you about the words freedom. How do, we, how do we get to that place of freedom? What is really freedom? Well, I would say well, the word freedom is that, well, the classic example would be a young man <laughs> who's reasonably handsome and wants to play the field and he then resists settling down mm. because he wants his freedom mm. and then we come back to that same young man and three years later and he's settled down He's picked his life partner. Mm -hmm. And so there's a certain level on which we would say there is far more to his life now mm -hmm. than there was before. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Because he's got freedom. Previously he thought he had freedom. And now we would say he does have freedom because in most people's eyes he is learning to devote himself. Mm -hmm to this thing mm -hmm. of being married and raising mm -hmm. children and, you know, the thought of wandering off with another, you know, and he, 
So in fact, the, the confinement, the responsibility, responsibilities are actually a way to cultivate freedom. Yes, and you know, somebody who you know, used to smoke and um, you know, used to turn their noses up at all their friends who didn't smoke, and then they give up cigarettes and then suddenly wonder what on earth. So we have a very big issue because people do think of this word freedom and they don't, you know, they don't, they don't see the other. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, for a school teacher, for example, it's very painful to have somebody in your class mm. and they have talent mm. and they just won't apply themselves mm. and develop the talent. And right next door to them is somebody who doesn't have nearly the talent, mm -hmm. but they are applying themselves. And in 30 years later, that person there who you know, didn't have the God-given gift, if you will, mm -hmm. they're the one who's the excellent violinist, mm -hmm. and the other person just couldn't be bothered, mm -hmm. and you know, it's barely t you know. It's very painful to a teacher Beautiful. to see, to see yes. that, that happening. And people don't, you know, it's, people who don't excel at anything mm -hmm. don't understand what you have to do to mm. get that excellence to shine. Mm -hmm. And it looks like a restricted lifestyle. Right. But it isn't. It's the mm -hmm. only way to get the light that it's mm -hmm. at the heart and the center of the mm -hmm. thing to shine. And then a difficulty comes because a person who is genuinely good at something mm -hmm. has spent hours practicing it and they make it look so easy. Mm -hmm. You know, so all over the world there are many people who appreciate and love the game of soccer. And to a lot of people it looks as if you just walk into a field and you kick a ball. Mm -hmm. And then you walk off and you've earned millions. Well, you go and try and do it. Aye. And, you know, to be fair to them, many of those soccer players, they've spent hours and hours and hours playing and running up mm -hmm. and down. And I'm not going to sit here and say that many of their behavior patterns are, are a model. Mm -hmm. But you're not going to be on the field representing your country in the mm -hmm. World Cup. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you have to have done some work in your life because there are lots of other talented people mm -hmm. queuing up, wanting to get that opportunity. And you know, you can look and you can see it, you can say, you know, there may be a cricketer there mm -hmm. who's applying themselves that little bit less, but they haven't never applied mm -hmm. themselves. You know, it's a difficult balance to mm -hmm. get between that, that question mm -hmm. of discipline and the question of... But there's absolutely zero point mm -hmm. in any native talent at anything. It is not going to grow mm -hmm. unless we put it in the <coughs> soil and we nurture it and we apply ourselves towards yeah. it. So freedom is that thing where we stand somewhere and we can do anything we want and we can do anything we want because we practice to get the skills necessary. So the artist stands there and they look and they say, what do I want to do? And they pick up their brush and they go, boom. Mm -hmm. But then they spent four years in art school mm -hmm. and they were drawing all that, you know, that's what's gone into that mm -hmm. simple little touch. You said yesterday about the older person in the village is the one who kind of, you go to him and you ask, and then one day you might be the oldest in the village and people will come to you and ask. And you know, we're taking care of each other in, in our society. And it's sort of something that I feel that it's lacking, you know, in our daytime. We're losing connection to humanity. We're lo losing connection to, to each other. We kind of don't need each other. We have the money, we, you know, we have the houses, we have the drivers, we have the housekeepers, so we don't need anyone. We're fine. And, you know, we... we and it's not just money. It's, it's possibly maybe um, not relating, you know, not, not relating, maybe it's judgment. I'm not, I'm not so sure what it is, but it's sort of something that I feel that coming here, it brings it back to a home, to connection. Uh, you know, even if it's a yoga practice, but yet you feel that connection, you feel that home and home in, in a full spectrum of it. And then I wanted to ask about being whole. You mentioned about in one of your um, recording, 
that I listened to, and I was with you in Omega three years ago, and I listened to it the other day, and, and you mentioned about being whole, is first you need to attempt to do healing to become whole. Okay, well, there's lots of things going on in the, in the various things that you have said. Um, yes, <laughs> the, the idea of becoming whole and what that... You mentioned is, Ayurveda even, you say that even Ayurveda yes, is... Yes, it, 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 it boils down to a, a conception of what, what we regard as, as, as health. I mean, you know, some of the things you said, um, you know, just now, I mean, anybody who's watching this probably and is in the slightest interested in yoga is aware of the fact that in the broader society around us, there does seem to be some kind of disconnect with something mm -hmm. fundamental. Other people would say, of course, that there isn't, that things are just fine. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but a lot of people feel that there is something, something's going on in that human beings are losing a sense of direction mm -hmm. as to... Mm -hmm. So that becomes a, a question of what is it really to be fully, truly human? Mm. And many people would try to answer that by saying, we get there by being engaged with others. And so others say, well, why are there so many people on blogs? Why are so many people on Twitter? Why mm -hmm. are so many people on Facebook? Because mm -hmm. they're wanting this sense of connection, connection yeah. with, with others. Mm -hmm. So this then boils down to the great fundamental issue of time. Mm. What is it Beautiful. that people do with their time? What is it that people want done mm -hmm. with their time? Mm -hmm. And we are, I mean, to take an evolutionary spin on it, we are a species of beings that grew up with fairly extensive networkings mm -hmm. in amongst others. We grew in larger communities that made their way through time and space. And on a very fundamental level, most of us are um, used to uh, um, come into being in this uh, industrialized world in which we live with some kind of genetic expectation of linking and interacting and embedding ourselves in a community of people that is in many ways larger than the one we actually get. Mm -hmm. So we just have deep connections with the three, four, five people who are in our immediate family. But there are people standing around them who we don't get to meet. Mm -hmm. So there's a certain sense in which we come into this life expecting, because that's what genetically mm -hmm. how mm -hmm. we grew, evolution, expecting we have the relays available to interlink with 50 or 60 people mm -hmm. on a fairly close level. We know their names, they all know our names, They're, you know, we do more than give them Christmas mm -hmm. cards, you know, we say mm -hmm. hello to them, or we know who they are, and most of them are missing, mm -hmm. because we just have the nuclear family, and most of the others are missing. Mm -hmm. And you know, without getting all hogwashy and sentimental about it, I mean, human beings that is our strength, that has been our strength, this ability to live in community mm, and beautiful. do things on a very large scale. Mm -hmm. So this chair that we're sitting in, I mean mm -hmm. a large number of human beings mm -hmm. came together to produce this. Mm -hmm. This chair would not be here without an extensive network of people handing mm -hmm. things on from one to the other. And we don't know most of them. Mm -hmm. And for a very long time we did know the people who had provided us with the artifacts mm -hmm. that we were using for our life. We wouldn't have to go very far to find the person who had made mm -hmm. the sweater that we were wearing, because mm -hmm. they wouldn't be very far removed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we would have exchanged goods and services back and forth, and we would know. And most of the people who are providing us with most of the services we have, we don't know them. Mm -hmm. Our energy comes down a wire, and we have no idea how, or who's done it, or what. And I think there's a very profound level on which people do want to engage 
in a way that they, 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 they you know, they don't and they yes, can't. Yes, very much. And I, I think that um, people do want to engage and they're ready to engage. And so, the, um, I mean, the word friend is a fairly amorphous word because in a more, let's say, traditional society, mm -hmm. you didn't have fire insurance. If your house burned down, what you needed to have done was be nice and kind to the people in the community around you. Mm -hmm. And when your house burned down, they would show up and help you rebuild, rebuild it. it and if you'd been really, really nice and kind to them and they loved you greatly, they would rush. <laughs> Mm -hmm. They would come, and, and your it, house yeah. would be up almost before it was born. And if you'd been unkind to a lot of people, mm -hmm. they would probably show a slightly mm -hmm. less sense mm -hmm. of urgency. Mm -hmm. I mean, they do it in the end because they felt obliged to, because it's a community. Mm -hmm. But it might take a couple of months longer than it would do if you were really popular. I mean, we just pay fire insurance. Yeah. We don't care. We just pay fire insurance. Yes. And you have to. If yeah. you've got a mortgage, you are going to pay mm -hmm. fire insurance. Mm -hmm. And we don't think in terms of who our friends really are. So, in a more traditional environment, and more historically speaking, our quote-unquote friends mm -hmm. were the people who would show up and rebuild our houses for us when the fires came. <laughs> and we don't have many of those people really, yes. in, in, in our lives. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, there's a certain level on which we want mm -hmm. those people in our lives, and we're, we're looking for yes. them. And we learn to be peaceful around mm -hmm. us, but you know, the people who are that meaningful to us that they mm -hmm. would come running mm -hmm. to help us rebuild our houses if our fires. I mean, we all just pay fire insurance, yeah. and you know, yep. it's and the that's level how we to solve which, our right. exactly. So I think a lot of what is going on is that people have a search, uh, and they're looking for those people who will come running when their such, house burns down. Such a search, and, yeah. uh, and, that and, connection. And rebuild it, yes. Mm -hmm. You just search for connection. If, um, if someone want to find the answer of why we're here, how is this existence come into place? What is my job on the path? You know, what do I do with all this confusion? All those big questions. Do you think they can get it by practicing yoga? <laughs> or do you think the more can get it by maybe possibly studying the Patanjali and the sutras and you know the things that you studied well it's nice when somebody answers <laughs> answers the question for you in the way that they've asked it and you know you 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 have to take the word yoga out of that mm. i mean anybody can begin to ask themselves questions that start to address mm -hmm. the meaning of life and mm -hmm. when a person starts doing that there have been great philosophers, there have been great thinkers, there have been great religious people around. They will soon find something around that begins to resonate. Mm -hmm. And then if we are blessed, they will start coming up with their unique answer. Mm -hmm. And we will have a great answer there before us because eventually coming out of their mouth is something that the rest of us can say, yeah, that's it. Mm -hmm. But you don't get to the place of saying that unless you begin asking mm -hmm. the right the kinds of questions mm -hmm. about who you are and what you are doing mm -hmm. here. And there are answers available. Because mm -hmm. it's about what you are affected by internally to such a degree that it's affecting how you live and how you look at, how mm -hmm. you look at the world. Mm -hmm. And the great religious philosopher Eliade, that was one of the things he said, that a religious person is defined by how they learn to see the world. Mm -hmm. And when you Beautiful. start believing that, the reason for the existence of the universe is so that we can learn to approach it in a particular way. That's what you start doing. Mm -hmm. And when somebody comes up to you and says, where did you get that smile on your face and why are you so happy? You can begin to try to answer, but they have to do their own work to mm -hmm. get their own smile mm -hmm. on their own face mm -hmm. in their mm -hmm. own way. Yeah. And there's nothing you can do but show that it's possible mm -hmm. by the way in which you have approached those issues mm -hmm. and wish them luck. Well, which make me think about something you said the other day about beautifying yourself. You can beautify yourself on the outside and, you know, put makeup and look wonderful, but, you know, to feeling beautiful, it's something that is very much internal, internal feeling. It's not just an external. And you mentioned something to do with, 
you know, can you feel, can you experience walking in the room and feeling beautiful and that beauty come from the inside? What does that really mean, being beautiful from inside? What does that mean, feeling really... Well, what it means approximately is that If I decided that I want to form an abusive marriage with you, mm -hmm. an abusive relationship, the first step is to cut you off from your friends mm. and cut you off from your family so mm. you have nobody but me. Mm -hmm. And the next step is then to say to you, you are very lucky to have me because nobody else wants you. Mm. And so the only definition you have of yourself is that I am the only person who is interested in you mm -hmm. and you are very lucky that I am interested in you. Mm -hmm. And once I have you in that position, I can start beating you mm -hmm. because I will always take you to that place. I am beating you because you are worthless. And you are so worthless that I am generous. I am the only person who is taking an interest in you. Mm -hmm. So you should be grateful. I might be making your life difficult, but it's for your own good because you are mm -hmm. intrinsically worthless. And mm -hmm. I. So then that person has a problem. Yes. Because against this, the they have to redefine yeah, themselves. Yeah, dependency of, of someone from the outside to kind of acknowledge them. And I know it sounds trite and it sounds trivial, but it can be very difficult and it doesn't just have to be a, an abusive man or woman. It, parents can do it sure. to their children. Sure. And friends can do it to each other. Yes. It is very easy to put somebody in that place mm -hmm. where their only definition of self is through you mm -hmm. and through your acceptance of them. And to, for somebody in that kind of a situation to get to the place of realizing that they are a worthy person intrinsically and of their mm -hmm. own right and without Beautiful. anybody else having to tell them this. Mm -hmm. Again, it sounds trite to say it, but it can be very difficult mm -hmm. For a person to get to that place without being arrogant and without being self-centered and without, you know, all those other... Mm -hmm. But to just be able to say to themselves, I am a worthy person and the universe went to a lot of trouble to make me and mm -hmm. it wouldn't have done that if I was worthless. So, mm -hmm. I'm That's not beautiful. worthless. That's great. And then to start turning to looking at that person whose only foundation for their relationship is to first of all convince you of your worthlessness and to look at them and one day say, you know something, I'm not a worthless person, and if you don't start changing your attitude towards me, mm -hmm. I won't be around. If you didn't study with Kofi Busia, it's a must in this lifetime to study with this incredible man. There's not a lot of teacher out there who teach like that, and you know, I, I wanted to share my love and passion with you, so thank you for watching. Thank you so much. Namaste. Namaste. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Oh.